tonight on the driving test. If the light suddenly changes, it's got to be out of stop. Panic behind the wheel. Please, please, I don't want to fail you now. As a supersized driving test. Oh, I might that sign. <laughs> Brings a truckload of trouble. Try and touch me. No! I was absolutely shitting myself. Will they pass or will they fail? We did lose seven points, but your result is. After 10 years in the business, Andrew knows the pressure of getting a driving license can play mind games on students. Test day, we usually have a driving lesson beforehand just to warm up, and it's like their evil twin has turned up. Because they're a total different person. I usually got to calm them down and go, can I have my usual student back in the car? Because the way you're going, it's not going to work out well. So today, Andrew hopes he doesn't get to see the dark side of lifestyle vlogger Lana. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Mainly I just do like beauty YouTube videos, like tutorials. You usually just create like a line. You can pretty much learn anything on YouTube, but you can't really learn to drive. Hi, Lana. Hey, How Andrew. So a week of intense lessons laid the perfect foundation for getting her license. Now Lana just needs to do the finishing touches on a final warm up before her test. She should know everything by now. I'm just polishing up and hopefully it's just minor mistakes we have to deal with. You ready for this? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go for a drive. Okay. My focus for the practice lesson is just to make sure that I've got everything down pat so then the second time that I do it for the actual test, I can just go through the motions and know like exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. Hopefully you'll remember everything. I will. A bit of a perfectionist. Yeah, I want it spot on the, this practice time. I judge myself quite harshly when I'm driving and I look at every little minor detail that I'm doing. Turning right. So that sold line you just mm -hmm. crossed there. Oh, was I not allowed to do that? The gap there, they find that gap to turn into. The broken up line bit. Yeah. Yeah, that part. Aww. I think I am being too hard on myself. I'm like critiquing every little thing I'm doing and like getting really upset when I'm not doing it right. So I just need to calm down. You scared of the curbs today? Yeah. Because that's way out. You pretty much stops in the middle of the road. Mm -hmm. The lesson started getting a bit all over the place. Is it 50 along here? Yes. Yeah. She was putting a lot of pressure on herself, mm -hmm. questioning everything, dwelling on it. Should I have waited? Yeah. So then she forgot what to do while she's driving. You got a little evil twin in your head. <laughs> questioning yourself. I don't know where to go. Don't listen to her. Just let it be turning left. She knows what to do. Her evil twin just needs to back off. Bye! Oh my god, now I'm like freaking out. Over in Palmerston, 17-year-old Daniel faces a race against time to get his licence. I'm only in Darwin for the holidays, so I'll be my last chance to get it because around 1 o'clock today I'll go back to Brisbane for school. Daniel, is it? Yeah. I'm Scott. Have a nice come. You. Pleased to meet you. With All just right. over three hours to go before he boards his flight, Daniel wants to impress examiner Scott, pass his test and prove his mum wrong. Yeah, my parents doubt me because I've only had two weeks to be able to do my actual manual's licence. So if I do get it today, I'll definitely show it in their face and be like, yeah, I actually got it. During his crash course in driving, Daniel struggled with the clutch. And release the brake and hold the friction. He stalled quite a few times stopping. Clutching a little, you got a bit too much. Clutching a little. But his confidence remained sky high. It's not that hard because in school, I always studied the night before for my exams. Shoulder check. So just check for driveways and that sort of yeah. thing. Yep. Yep. Now recheck. Yeah, all good. Daniel thinks he's 10 foot tall and bulletproof. I don't shoulder check that much because I'd use my mirrors. You needed to recheck your blind spot. We needed to check that driveway again. And I was down my neck saying, oh, yeah, you're not checking. But I, was, I always go, oh, well, I already know there's nothing there. Test start time is 9.20. Test sheet we're doing is one double five double one. Now it's test day. Jeez. Daniel has 45 minutes to prove he's as good as he thinks he is. OK, mate, well, when safe to do so, when you're ready, we're going to reverse to our left and we'll head out the exit. With the test off to a bad start, maybe Daniel should have paid more attention in his lessons and an early night might have helped. Last night, I ended up going to sleep at like four. I was driving on up my mates. <laughs> With only four hours sleep, can Daniel keep his eyes open for the rest of the test? Most worried about uh, not doing shoulder checks. 
So I'll probably be there just doing this every five minutes. And that's what they want to see. Can't do it my way, have to do their way and make them happy. He's definitely making his shoulder checks obvious, like over obvious. Over exaggerating shoulder checking can be definitely be dangerous. With Daniel spending much of his test facing backwards, dangerous could be an understatement. The driving test is not all about drivers of four wheel. Sometimes it's much more than that. Wannabe truck drivers of all shapes and sizes come to Palmerston Driving School. Following every gear grind and trailer turn is instructor and examiner, Glenn. I'm very passionate about making people safe on the roads. 20 years of training, 480,000 kilometres, I know what I'm doing. Today's student trying to get a handle on the trucks is 37-year-old Vanessa. I'm a truck driver and I'm crazy. <laughs> she operates monster mining trucks in remote Gove, but she wants to go supersize. Evil can evil of the truck driving world. So I'm calling myself for the day. Vanessa right. aims to master huge multi-trailer rigs. We're going to just take the truck out with the one trailer and we'll just probably do some laps just to get it up and down the gears a little bit. Truck man Glenn hopes to steer Vanessa towards success with a final lesson before her test. But first, there's 18 gears to get her head around. The mining trucks she's used to are automatic. So just no rev, no rev, no rev. Just just yeah, that's it. The learning of the gears, the shifting up, the shifting down, the revs where the revs are meant to be. Rev again. The 18 speed. I haven't even learnt the half of it yet. Big rev. Back on the road. Really good instructor, but if I if I mess up, he lets me know about it. <laughs> Drop speed right down your brakes and just the speed. What gear was in? Oh, you were talking about. Oh, instructor. <laughs> With her act now in gear, the next challenge of this lesson is negotiating narrow city streets. Right on top of the white line. Don't move off the white line. Don't get out of the car. Stay on the white line. Yep. You don't move over. Yeah, that's it. You're not really on it, that's better. That was scraping the curve. I take him out with a one trailer yep. and make him go into a tight situation. Used to the wide open spaces of mining country, if she wants that multi-rig licence, this is Vanessa's last chance to master the obstacle course before her test. So almost hit that sign. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Just go, 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 go. go. The turning was tight. I'm thinking, I'm going to hit that, you know? There's no point in leaving a metre of room on our left and then hitting the sign on the right. I'll do that. Just go straight through, straight to that which set, straight to yep, that which set. Yep. Almost touching. Try and touch it. No! I felt like I was way too close. You haven't knocked over any yet? Stay wide, stay wide, wide. I was absolutely yep. shitting myself. After a heart-stopping lesson, the self-proclaimed evil Knievel of the trucking world has come out in one piece. Vanessa drove how I knew she could. She struggled a fair bit at the beginning with a few of the gears, but she listened and she improved throughout the whole lesson and by the end she was driving quite well. But it's time to raise the stakes as Glenn turns from instructor to examiner for Vanessa's multi-rig truck test. I got this. Vanessa's first challenge is to attach the truck to the trailer, forming a double road train. That's not easy. <laughs> you just gonna have to line up the edge of your trailer with the edge of a dolly. And the first thing they've got to do is use their mirrors. You can't look over your shoulder because we've got no back window. You just end up doing this. It's like holy moly. Vanessa has one chance to get this hook up right, or it's back to square one. I was like, hell yeah. I was absolutely stoked. I was like, I'm not even going for a drive now. I just want to go home. I've done it. <laughs> now for the really hard part, keeping 36 metres and 80 tonnes of truck on the road. It's make or break time for that multi-rig licence. We've got to negotiate a lot of turns. We want to make sure she can do the two trailers. It's a sort of the important part of this assessment. OK, so when you're ready, we'll um, head off. Copy that. That second trailer, you really got to watch. 
you got to give things a wide berth. With 42 tyres on her truck, steering becomes even more of a challenge as they hit the suburbs. You won't find many places in Australia where you take a road train through traffic lights. You can get one, two, three, and even four trailers around a lot of these traffic lights in Darwin without taking out everyone's road. It's just knowing how wide you have to go. You've got to watch your outside line, your inside line, mirrors. There's a lot going on. Make right to that curb. And just follow that edge. She was having trouble with a couple of things, cutting off everybody to make the turn. And, of course, you don't have to do that. When it's safe, we're going to be moving the right way. Test over, and it's up to Glenn to tell Vanessa if she's made the big time. OK. So, yeah, are you ready? Oh. Over at Andrew's driving school, Lana's on her last lesson before her test, but she has a bad case of last minute nerves. Roundabout coming up, we're going to continue straight ahead. So I don't indicate until I'm exiting. It's like oh a an God. hour before your driving test. You can, should know this. Can you just tell me? <laughs> you should know this. Um, do I indicate or no? Only when I'm exiting. There you go. I'm just checking. Yeah. Oh, who just did that? <gasps> oh my god, now I'm like freaking out. Breathe. I can't. You have to. I should install oxygen masks in this car. <laughs> I do know how to drive. I just kind of need to just let my instincts go and like stop questioning like every single thing that I'm doing. Watch the road, watch the road. <gasps> oh my god, <laughs> I don't want to go for the test anymore. You'll I You'll be fine. It. You'll be fine. You just. Veered up the curb, which totally freaks her out. Breathe. I can't. I honestly am going to be sick. Very good shoulder check. Turning right though for me. Oh. Good. I'll help you. Thank you. <laughs> we about this. Mhm. Mm You'll be fine. I'm like about to cry. Yeah, we don't want to do that on your test though. Yeah. She's a more than capable driver. Just overanalyzing it is not going to help at this time anymore. You've made a mistake. There's nothing you can do about it. Evil Alana to we keep it far away for the next 45 minutes. You can do it. If I didn't think you could do it, I would have called it. All right, this is your time now to shine. Okay. Teflon Daniel doesn't have any confidence issues. It's the middle of his test, and having mastered his manoeuvres, he reckons he's cruising. Perfect time to kick back for a chat. My stepdad used to make me dig the trenches, but with like that big pickaxe thing. Yeah. Daniel's a bit of a have a chat. You know, you intend to chat the whole way throughout the test. I might be going on a, like, a uh, tiki tour. But it does show confidence that he can chat and also drive at the same time. We go around, like, the world pretty much. So, like, in France and in Europe. Though, with chatting, does come mistakes. You know, you just put my head down and you're sort of just like, oh, it'll be all right. At the end, turn and left. At the moment, dreams of a Kentucky oh, tour yeah. are distracting him from the job at hand. Oblivious to the critical missed indicator, well, continue straight ahead to the Daniel hardly pauses for breath. So instead of schoolies, like Gold Coast or Bali yeah. or whatever. Travel the world. So as the test does go on, you can see learners, they fall back into their old habits. So we've got to keep focused all the way to the end. Right. So I'll probably do one straight for ahead. Um, two weeks or maybe not that long. Depends how much money I have, really. So that's the second indicator miss. One more miss of an indicator, the test is over. Turning right at the roundabout. Work. Daniel's only an indicator away from failing, and he's desperate to catch that flight back to school with a licence. For the first time, he's rattled. As I was going around the roundabout, I uh, realised that I didn't actually have my indicator on. So I just quickly put it on, see if he didn't realise, but uh, I think he did. With her test over, Trucky Vanessa has a nervous wait to hear if she's passed her multi-combination truck test. Overall, that was quite a good drive. Yeah, the main thing we wanted to see was you can get around some tight corners with the with the trailers on the back. Yep. And uh, be safe enough with the gears. Like this. So how they go? Congratulations. Got my MC. Yes. My new Chucky. Got my MC license. Professional uh, gear jammer. Yeah, I can tow trailers now. <laughs> got that manoeuvre? <laughs> Let me go out and celebrate. Go to the pub, have a few beers. 
He's all invited. Daniel's driving test is over. Alrighty, I'll get you to make the car safe, so go neutral handbrake, and I'll just go through and we'll tell you the score up here. Sure of himself and underprepared, Daniel has no idea he missed indicators. So, has he done enough to pass? I'm not too confident, but it should be fine, I guess, hopefully. OK. A couple of indicators miss. <clears throat> yeah. Must indicate, and I think you realise on another roundabout, when you're halfway around, you indicate. Your left shoulder checks were quite severe. You're almost like doing a lane change. I just wanted to make sure you knew that I was shoulder checking, that's all. I noticed that, I noticed that. We did lose seven points, but your result is... You've passed your test. You've Sweet. got your manual license. Well Cheers. done. So I just uh, passed my manual test. You got me a manual license. Considering I've only been driving the manual for two weeks, I've done pretty well. It's like an accomplishment in myself and to rub it into my parents' face. <laughs> If Lana was nervous with Andrew on her warm-up lesson, she's at breaking point facing Mark on her test. Hello, Miss Lana. How are we? Good, thanks. How are you? Oh, I'd complain, but no one listens. Now that it's time like, to take the test, I'm kind of freaking out a little bit. All right, your driving test number today is 16583. Mm -hmm. Just remember what you were taught to do mm -hmm. and what you've been practising, and remember to breathe. OK. Man, is she nervous. Real nervous. Not this turning, but the next one we will turn left, please. And now we are actually on the test route. Okay. I'm going to try to keep calm and just pretend like it's a normal lesson. Like, I'm not going for a test, I'm just taking a strange man for a drive and it's all going to be fine. At least it's sunny day, it's not raining. <laughs> I should hope not, it's the dry season. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. <laughs> she starts to calm down. The drive is actually quite nice. We get to the point where we have to do a reverse parallel park now. As we pull forward, I'd like it to stop right next to that ute there. We have to find an appropriate vehicle. Back and and sometimes it will happen quite quickly. We do have four movements. You go from here mm -hmm. to there. The face was a bit of a picture because I don't think she expected it. And yeah, I just immediately got really panicky and I was feeling really nervous. I actually ask her, have you finished? Hoping she's going to take the hint and say yes, and then we're done. No. OK. Because at that point, I know what's coming. The more times they move, the more chance they've got of actually messing it up. OK, finish that? This is good. No. Huh? And now we're getting more crooked. And I'm thinking, please don't do this. It comes under not parking to the required standard, which is a fail line. Is that four movements? That's three. Three? Wait, if I kept going back, would that still be the third? Yeah. I, like, kind of had a mind blank. I just thought, oh, my gosh, what am I doing? I just did all the things that I wouldn't even normally do. OK, finish now. Thank God. We've come up to the main road. It's a two-lane road. And I know these lights, and I know they change relatively quickly. If the lights suddenly change and we're far enough away, she's got to be out of stop. I'm sitting there going, please, don't do anything, Lana, because I don't want to fail you now. And then the lights changed. And my heart rate's starting to go up, because we are, like, four, 500 metres left to go before we finish. As you go round, I'd like you to pull over on the left-hand side for me. And make the car safe. All right, I've just got some writing to do, Miss Alana, yes. and then we'll uh, discuss what you've done today. As I'm going through um, the marking, I can hear her. <laughs> and the breathing is becoming very, very erratic and... <laughs> And I thought, is she crying?
Lana's just come to the end of her driving test and she's sweating on the result. As I'm going through the marking, I can hear her. And the breathing is becoming very, very erratic. And I thought, is she crying? She wasn't. She was just having trouble breathing. Breathing over there. No, I was about to say, I don't. I think I didn't breathe for a minute. All right, Miss Lana. Um, I want to talk about the traffic lights. We came up to them. They turned green as we come towards them. Mm -hmm. The bloke on the uh, hairdryer on wheels, the scooter, he went, and as we got to the lights, they changed to, to amber, didn't they? And just as we got the other side, they turned to red. Mm. I thought, like, I had to keep going. It didn't help the fact the bloke on the hairdryer on wheels didn't exactly go very fast. Mm -hmm. But you already committed yourself right on top of the line. That's when they changed from it. Um, now, there's no ticks over here. Mm -hmm. Your score is such that, unfortunately, oh. I've got to inflict you on the rest of Australia. Congratulations. Oh, did I get my piece? <laughs> did I? Yes, you passed. I did. Sign there to say that oh. I've told you. <laughs> Nasty, horrible person I am, I mate. I wasn't going to get it. <laughs> Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's okay. I'm so scared. All right, now take a deep breath and uh, compose <laughs> yourself. All right, and breathe. Oh, thank goodness. I was like, seriously, when I was waiting for him to fill it out, I couldn't breathe. I was like, <gasps> and I like just held my breath. Lovely. Well done, miss. Congratulations. I have my piece, finally. <laughs> I'm really excited. Oh my gosh. <laughs> With another notch in her trucking belt, Vanessa is ready to hit the open road. Daniel's still pleased with himself for getting his licence and he hasn't shut up about it. After recovering from excitement, Lana is driving safely and breathing normally.